Hey everybody, it's Norm from Tested, and today I have a show and tell and hopefully a fun project that I can get completed today ahead of going to Silicon Adams Convention in San Jose this weekend. And it involves this in front of me right here. Now, what is this thing? Uh, Star Wars fans will recognize this as the ice cream maker or now canonically known as the Camtono case uh, that was first appeared in The Empire Strikes Back in the evacuation of Cloud City. So the character, the background character, Wilro Hood, runs by carrying his, what fans assume to be like some type of a data storage device, but it was actually a uh, Hamilton Beach ice cream maker. It's become this fun, memified thing. Uh, and it made its appearance, its official appearance, in the first season of The Mandalorian and has since appeared on uh, the book of Boba Fett as a storage device, kind of a, a carrying case. Uh, Werner Herzog gives it to Mando to give him the best car um, as his reward in the opening episodes and calls it the Cam Tono case. Disney now sells this over at Galaxy's Edge, over Disneyland and Walt Disney World, and my dear friends Ryan and Mari got this for me for my birthday this past week. Thank you so much, Ryan and Mari. I've been looking forward to getting one of these. And once I got it here, I'm like, oh, okay, well, it's kind of this nice novel artifact from the old show that has this background story. It's been memefied. Like I could take it to celebration next year and join the running of the Wilro Hoods, uh, but also kind of takes a bunch of space. Now it does have some functionality. It's not just a, a $50 you know, tub here. Uh, and you can actually open it and store things inside. So the top, there's a handle and it twists to lock. I actually have it locked right here. You can see there's a control panel with three buttons and a fourth button that's also an LED light. Uh, you can program in a six digit code. So I have, for example, a six digit code plugged in. You can see the light turns from red to green, which means it's unlocked. And then I twist the lid and boom, kind of loudly, three doors pop open to reveal this cavity inside. Uh, the doors are on these loose hinges and they have, you know, decent kind of padded, felt padded liner. Um, it's a reasonable stay space on the inside and latches close. So I can close all three doors, turn the top, light turns off and carried around wherever as uh, something to carry your Star Wars props, for example. Uh, something I haven't seen people um, show on YouTube is how this actually works. And of course, the first thing I want to do when I got this was to take it apart. So they're actually on the bottom, a compartment for three AA batteries um, that it runs off of and it comes with. And off of the side rails, it travel, uh, two wires travel on the inside of the side rail to the top cavity. Uh, now what I've already done is unscrewed six screws on the, uh, the ceiling of the interior, which then allows me to take the top actually off. So if we can get a close up of what this looks like, I can actually show you how this latching mechanism works. It's actually not all that sophisticated. It's a very simple mechanism, but there are a lot of moving parts here. Quite impressive that I think justifies some of that $50 price. Uh, the doors are latched in with three of latches here. So you can see these three uh, black tabs and the latches are spring actuated. You can see there are these springs in the back here, and uh, they kind of seesaw up and down along a central axis. So if I depress one of these, it opens up the latch, a door opens, same with the other two, quite simple, and then uh, it doesn't automatically close, so you kind of press it close, and there it goes. Snaps back into place because of that spring. Uh, and the actual opening mechanism happens on the lid here, because you have these three arms that then can rotate by then unlock it. And as they rotate, they actually roll over the, the latches and depress them. So you can see on the arms, there's actually a little bit of a, a spring actuated um, finger, a little tab here. So on the back of the latch, because it's curved, uh, the rollers rotate and they roll over the back of a latch, 
like that, and then push down and the door pops open. Uh, if I rotate the top handle and lock it into place, you can actually see there's this. This is the locking mechanism. There's a pin that's being um, pushed in right now by a small electromagnet. Um, and there's an opening right there. So if I turn my lid, you can see right as I pop in here, the pin gets popped up because of this electromagnet and it's held in place. And now I can get actually locked. There it goes. I can't actually then twist and open it. So by typing in that six digit code on this PCB here, it activates the, uh, the electromagnet that releases that pin and I can then turn and get these arms to roll over the latches. Like I said, fairly simple mechanism uh, and obviously um, built to be reliable as this is a toy that kids three and older are going to be able to play with and use to store whatever they want. Um, so also looking on the inside, the the the, uh, the top portion, this lid here, uh, there's a lot of empty space, a lot of empty volume here. So I could see potential uh, if you want to mount some electronics, extra electronics, extra lights, uh, kind of drill some holes maybe on the uh, the ceiling here. Uh, there's definitely room for modification, plenty of room for modification. Very easy to access, just unscrewing six screws on the top here. Uh, I'm not gonna do that level of modification today because I just have one day to get this ready. Uh, but what I did want to do was actually create some, um, some utility, some functionality. As I pop this open again, for the interior of this, uh, the case here. Now I don't have stacks of Beskar lying around the house, uh, but what I do have are things in my office and workshop that might need storage, some tools, some supplies, and if I'm gonna have this tub sitting in my office, if I'm gonna justify having this kind of voluminous object in my office, I need to give it some purpose. And so I think I'm gonna turn this into a paint storage caddy. Now, I currently store my model paints on this caddy that I made last year that I laser cut, uh, and these are my Archive X paints. I love them, they're great, uh, and I'm very happy with this pink caddy design. Uh, but let's have fun and let's see if we can make a different version of this using the Camtono, because I do think that I should be able to store, you know, at least 10, maybe a dozen of these one ounce bottles on the uh, inside here, and let's see. No, not even tall enough to do two, uh, two layers of them. So uh, it should be a fun project. I'm gonna break out the tape measure, break out the calipers, get some acrylic sheets, do some prototyping, and see if we can turn this into a paint caddy that I can bring to silicon. Okay, so I'm back from some quick uh, vector designing and laser cutting, uh, and I'm ready for some very first preliminary test fits. Uh, one of the things I really wanna do is improve my iteration speed. I don't wanna spend too much time trying something just on a piece of paper or on the computer screen. I wanna get some physical uh, prototypes out so I can figure out what problems I actually don't know I'm gonna encounter. Because as I look at this, uh, it did turn out that yes, I can hold over a dozen of these paint bottles, uh, these one ounce or 30 milliliter paint bottles. And I had the perfect diameter cutouts from my past um, uh, paint rack that I made. And so I whipped up this. Now this is six inches in diameter, which as I measured is basically 
the exact diameter of the base of the interior. This is a conical shape, so it tapers up, and it goes from about six inches at the base to a little over like eight, eight and a half inches at the ceiling here. And I'm thinking of this as two parts. There's gonna be, in my, in my hopefully, a paint rack solution on the bottom that can hold 14 bottles. And then I'm thinking that maybe I can have a top shelf as well, because as it turns out, there's a nice lip here on these three beams that can maybe uh, bear the load of a, a platform that I can consider a top shelf. Uh, so cut this out, cut a couple pieces out actually, and as we drop this in, that is six inches, perfect. Put a couple of these bottles in just for test fitting. Um, and as paint racks go, of course, not only do I need the base, I also need a kind of bracing bracket to hold these into place as I'm moving and shuffling them around. And so I cut out another disc here with the same design for the holes, uh, but made it a little bit wider. So this is six and a half inches. And as I'm putting this in here, I'm also remembering that because there are three openings, because there are three pillars and three walls to the interior here, uh, the clearance I have to actually get to the inside isn't going to be the full diameter. So if I look because of this taper here, it's actually only, you know, uh, one or two inches in the bottom, the widest horizontally. I'm gonna get is about five and a half inches, uh, but I can put things in diagonally, and there I have about seven and a half inches as I've measured it. Uh, so I can put a large solid piece, if I want it to be a solid piece in and not have to like split it across hemispheres, um, seven and a half inches is the biggest diameter of anything of a, a round platform. So this is six and a half. My thinking is I can maybe take advantage of that taper so drop this down, is it a line? It looks to be, oh wow. So already I can see even at six and a half, half inches, the diameter is, this piece is gonna be too wide, so it's gonna create, I mean it's not gonna even, even hold the bottle really in place. The bigger issue though, and I'll illustrate that by showing you this test piece I cut out. This is seven inches. As I put that in, and is there clearance even diagonally? Yep, seven inches. Seven inches is not, uh, yeah, it's, I can go a little wider. Try seven and a half, which I have another test piece. Uh, seven inches gets me something that loosely sits here as a shelf. But if I want this as a shelf, and I want to have a bracing bracket, let's say this high, I'm not going to have enough clearance, you see, to remove the bottles above it. Uh, so either the shelf goes away, or I can lower this bracing bracket right here. So this, at six and a half inches, is not going to work. But at six inches, if I have, for example, imagine this is a secondary bracket now, as opposed to being up this high, is down like right here. So maybe enough so it clears I can read the name of the paint, like right there. That's about an inch. Then that's gonna be enough so I don't need to lift this as high up to get the clearance to remove the bottles. Let's do a quick test of that. And actually what I'll do is I'll grab my seven and a half inch test cut piece, which obviously isn't going to fit either this way, but diagonally, oh, it is a tight fit. Oh, it fits. Great. So seven and a half inches sits there. It's a little bit of wiggle room, so I could probably add another eighth an inch or so. Eighth, eighth of an inch. Oh no, I can't because might not fit diagonally, so I'll find a way to, to have this not be so loose. But for the purposes of testing the height of the shelf and the height of this framing bracket, that is still, wow, that is not a lot 
of clearance. So the lower I go, the more clearance I'll have. And yep, I can remove that now. That's no problem. But that's like half an inch off of the base. And that might not be enough to hold these securely uh, if I'm carrying this and walking around with it. Hmm. All right. So again, I think of this as maybe two different problems to solve. What does that paint rack look like on the bottom? How high do I have the second bracing frame? Uh, and then the best way to install and mount a shelf that maybe I can have this elevated half inch itself. So it's a pretty low profile shelf, you know, maybe good for some paint brushes, maybe good for some oil, some uh, tubes of oil paint, right, that can sit in here. Um, ooh, I could even do like a drawer on it. Uh, and the higher I raise that, the more space I'll have as clearance to remove the paint bottle. Uh, another thing is there is that small LED light, which isn't very bright, as I mentioned earlier. So yeah, you can barely even notice that it turned on and has this little orange light there, but I'm gonna lose all that light underneath uh, for the paint, so I may wanna consider installing some lighting under the shelf as well. Lots to consider, that's how I wanna iterate, prototype fast, realize what problems I have to solve, so let's head back to the drawing board, head back to Adobe Illustrator, and laser cut more test pieces and hopefully solve these problems. Friends, I think we got something here. So since I saw you last, which should have been just a minute for you, uh, I was trying to solve the problem of having a paint rack on the bottom of the Camtono, as well as a shelf that would give me enough clearance uh, while still being useful as a shelf so that I could fit these bottles of model paint. And I've come up with designs I think will solve uh, those problems. And it starts with a shelf. The last thing I talked about was thinking about some lighting and having some lights, um, not only this built-in light, which I could eventually maybe swap out that LED for a brighter one, uh, but also something underneath the shelf as well. And for that, I'm gonna use a simple LED strip light, the COB LED strip light. This is a uh, just one I had around that's USB powered. So nice and convenient. I can run this off a USB battery pack. Uh, but thinking about how I was going to uh, adhere that to the bottom of the shelf, I didn't want to, for example, take the bottom of the shelf and just kind of zigzag and do a, a mess of a, uh, a taping job. Uh, nor did I want to kind of you know, do a multi-edge perimeter run around the end and have like and bend the corners of it. So the best way was to maybe create a ring that the shelf could sit on top of that could line the interior of the ring with that light. And that solves two problems. One, it gives me a place to mount that light. And two, it also elevates the shelf and gives me a little bit more clearance. And so that's what we have design right here. So this is my shelf design. This is the ring, which I decided to, yes, split into two pieces. It is eight inches, a little over eight inches in diameter. And uh, it's uh, about a quarter inch thick. I actually might do two of these. But if I put this in here, we're doing test fitting in real time now. One, I want to make sure this fits. Uh, yes, it does. A little bit of pressure. Yep, right there, like so. Uh, I have my seven and a half inch solid piece shelf, which actually is a whole order of operations I'm thinking of now. This needs to go in first. So pop that in, lift that up. So this is the shelf as opposed to the shelf itself sitting on these pillars. I have it elevated another quarter inch 
Or I could have two of these, an elevated half inch. Every little bit matters here. And that's where I'm going to go mount my LED strip light on the inside of this white ring. So quarter inch white ring and a shelf. And then I decided, well, why not, instead of just a shelf, I can also have uh, a little bit of a drawer. So decided to use some extra quarter inch and some eighth inch I had lying around. And this is actually really neat. I like this design. This becomes the frame of my drawer. This is the actual drawer itself, which I have in a light plywood. And then also laser cut. This becomes the lip of the drawer. So you can see it can slide out like that. Very low profile. We're talking about a quarter inch here, uh, but that should be able to brace, you know, a small piece of, you know, whatever I have stored up there, uh, which I could also use some of the coke and loop or something to adhere. So this fits on top. No problem. Now rotate the whole thing. Like so. Okay. And then once I glue these pieces together, this will be a drawer that can slide in there. So you imagine you know, pull that out. Um, I also want to take on this project and not necessarily do any permanent modifications yet because I'm still iterating in my head. However, I finish it today, uh, I might come back and do a completely different design. So I don't want to do, be gluing things uh, to the Camtono uh, or drilling into it just yet. Uh, I'll save that for the future. So instead, what I have is I've also laser cut out some brackets here that can press fit on the pillars. Let's put one right there. One right here, and the final one in the back. That holds my shelf into place. And so it's actually pretty firm, pretty sturdy, and the drawer can slide in and out. So that's the shelf. And I've given myself a little bit of extra clearance. Every little bit helps. Uh, so now we turn to uh, the actual bottle rack. And for that, I realize uh, I should maybe make the base plate a little bit thicker than the eighth inch I was thinking of. So this is that same quarter inch white acrylic, which I have as my base. You can see I've cut some extra mounting holes on there now for the uh, ways uh, to mount the top frame. That's still six inches. We'll put maybe a bottle or two on the inside here. And then I have a matching one, also six inches now at the top, uh, and also a few of these walls that I've now cut to hold, hold it up. So let's do a test fit. We'll just put one or two of these in before the full assembly. Okay, so I uh, ended up being about um, three quarter inches in terms of actual height. And the bottles themselves, once this is secure, the bottles feel pretty secure. And yes, I do have the clearance. Oh, sweet. That's great. All right, so I'm pretty happy with this design. I have to install my LED lights. I also got some um, adhesive back felt that I want to use for my little shelf. And I'm going to start gluing the shelf together as well as the paint rack together before I do a final installation. I told you we had something. I'm getting really excited.
everything is working out very nicely indeed. I have my top shelf installed now. Uh, everything fit as I had hoped. A uh, little bit of the kind of figure out the order of operations because of how wide the pieces are. I knew I needed to get certain pieces in before, uh, for example, wiring those lights. But the lights are now installed on this inner ring. I have my felt line little tray perfectly slotted in as well. That's very satisfying. Uh, and then now for the assembly of the paint rack on the bottom. And I can do that now because also when I got this earlier this week, I immediately went on Amazon and had to pick up a Lazy Susan. So this just arrived, six inches in diameter. Um, it fits in, but I forgot to factor in its thickness when I did the measurements for my paint rack. This is half an inch thick. So I lose another half inch of clearance, but that fits in there. And we have our tray, which as a unit does not fit in. So once again, I'll have to put in the pieces first and then assemble it uh, within using some acrylic cement. All right, let's do a test fit. Get that in there. There it goes. This top piece, yes, everything's fitting so far. Very nicely. Very nicely indeed. And a moment of truth. Bottle of paint, can I put one in? Oh, I can. Oh, yes, that's very satisfying. And if I can put it in, that means shouldn't have a problem removing it as well. Let me do one last fit here. And the Lazy Susan means I can rotate it and get access to any color from any of the three sides. Double check. No problem. Able to remove it. There's just enough clearance. To remove it. Oh. oh, I'm so glad that worked out. I'm gonna do some final um, gluing of everything together to itself. Again, I'm not gluing anything to the cam tono uh, just yet in case I decide to change up the design in the future, but this will be good enough for me to bring down to a silicon this weekend. If you're in the Bay Area, stop by, see this at the tested booth and say hi. Uh, but if you're not, hope you enjoyed this little build and show and tell of the Star Wars Cam Tono case that I got for my birthday. And it now becomes a portable paint rack. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful weekend and I'll see you next time. Bye. Hey guys, Adam Savage from Tested here. If you've ever seen the six inch ruler in inches and centimeters on my forearm and wanted one of your own, but you didn't want it to be permanent, well, today's your lucky day. You can now buy temporary tattoos of my measuring stick, my measuring forearm, uh, at tested-store.com. Comes like this, goes on in about 30 seconds with a little water. The instructions are on the back. It comes off with rubbing alcohol and hopefully it warms you up to the idea of permanently attaching a measuring device to your body because I use mine every single day.